All right, uh, everyone can hear me? Everyone's awake? Because I'm not. <laughs> so um, as Jim mentioned, uh, I'm going to go over some updates uh, from the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Uh, you know, obviously in this room, it seemed like more people knew about uh, you know, one of our uh, first projects, Kubernetes, more than the foundation itself, but that's sometimes how it is. So I want to tell you a little bit about our origin story. So, um, oops, working. Clicker, Theo. We got a little uh, snafu, but there we go. It's a hard click. All right, so uh, a little bit of an origin story around CNCF. So no, I think we're good. Ah, thanks. You told me this would happen, so cool. So a um, little origin story. I, I was fortunate enough to join the Linux Foundation a little around two years ago to be involved with the formation of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So uh, for those who aren't aware, uh, Cloud Native is really a form of computing that was pioneered by the internet scale giants out there like Google, Facebook, Twitter, Netflix, and, and so on. And when I, when, I, when I say cloud native, all I mean is you have services that live in containers that are orchestrated by some central system like, like, like Kubernetes. And so we started with this kind of simple goal of bringing cloud native computing to the masses. And when we started the foundation, we humbly started with 22 members and Kubernetes as kind of our seed uh, project. And so that was about, uh, about two years ago, like technically under two years ago, because we didn't hold our first board meeting until December of 2015. But um, it's been amazing to kind of see the growth uh, over time. As Jim alluded to, uh, I arguably think we are the fastest growing open source foundation at the Linux Foundation, but some people will uh, debate me on that one. But um, as of today, uh, we've basically experienced over 6x growth in under two years. Uh, we're at 141 uh, members. Uh, it's, it's really amazing to kind of see a wide variety of companies uh, really trying to adopt cloud native computing. And for me, if you kind of were studious and looked at this list of members, um, I think for the first time in the history of, of open source, we have the top six cloud providers under one open source foundation umbrella working together to advance the notion of, of cloud native computing to, to, to me, which is amazing for being someone who's been involved in open source um, for, for a long time. Um, also, uh, as kind of like a geeky, nerdy thing, um, I completely find it fascinating that uh, Kubernetes, our first project, is actually technically self-hosted on itself for the first time. I'm sure some of you have heard, but GitHub is replatformed on Kubernetes. So Kubernetes source code is on GitHub. GitHub runs Kubernetes, so it's self-hosted. So I find this as a, as a fun uh, kind of uh, a fun geeky thing to think about. Um, but in reality here, um, CNCF, the, the, the lifeblood of CNCF is its projects. You know, I love all, of our, I'll love all my projects uh, equally, and uh, we have 12 of them. We've grown to 12 projects over the last two years. They cover spaces from, you know, from orchestration to monitoring to tracing, uh, and, and you know, I'm sure some of you have seen this uh, wonderful cloud-native landscape. Uh, if you haven't, um, you know, it, it's a bit of a crazy diagram. It kind of shows the complexity of this space. But I think the important thing here is that um, when it comes to cloud native, there are multiple paths to get to cloud native, right? There's different technologies out there that could use. Obviously, we love for you to consider CNCF projects. We think they're of high quality and, and you know, something you should consider. But we're realists, right? We understand there's other technology and projects out there that you may want to use for specific things. But the important thing in this diagram is there. There, there, there's some missing holes here. There's some missing pieces. So, uh, you know, today I'm happy to announce that we're going to fill some missing gaps in this diagram, and I'd like to uh, <laughs> introduce uh, Riaz uh, Fazulaboy from Docker to talk about some of these uh, new gaps that we're filling today. So, uh, please welcome Riaz to the stage. Thanks, Chris. So as Chris mentioned, uh, today we are filling a couple gaps uh, on that past diagram. And so with great excitement, I'm happy to announce two new projects to the CNCF, the Update Framework and Notary. So thank you. So to give you some context, both projects are focused on security. And both projects focused on a trusted delivery of content 
What that means is getting some data from point A to point B, the data could be anything cross-platform, in a trusted way. So many of you are probably thinking, OK, we have a way of doing this. We maybe can use signatures. So here's a signature. And you may recognize the signature, you may not, in which case you have some authenticity of the signature. But we're, what we're really missing from just signatures, we're missing a lot of context. We're missing when was the signature made? Is it still valid? Is one signature enough for our data, our software, or the, or the document that this was on? And so what Tuff, the update framework, uh, really strives to achieve is providing context for more robust software updates in a trusted way. So for some background on Tuff, Tuff was developed by a group of researchers at the New York University, the engineering school, and they drew some ideas from Tor, which many of you may know as an anonymity uh, piece of software for communication. And Tor had a very exciting update framework called Fandy, where they sought out to make a very secure update system for Tor, even in the face of some of the strongest adversaries. And so in developing Fandy and developing Tuff, the Tuff researchers decided to really tackle giving more context around signatures so that you can make very robust decisions. So for example, from signatures, you may already get authenticity, understanding who signed, integrity, understanding if what was signed is the same thing that you want. But Tuff goes beyond that by giving you freshness guarantees. Is this the most up-to-date signature, the most up-to-date package? It allows you to do multi-signature thresholding. So do I have all the signatures that I need? Do I have you know, three signatures, five signatures? And very importantly, in Tuff, if a key is compromised, it's not an end-of-the-world event. You can rotate the key, and your consumers of your package, or whatever software or data you're providing, can still verify your signature and continue with, with the update process. And so Tuff, as I mentioned, is cross-platform, and many platforms and programming languages have already adopted or are in the process of adopting, adopting Tuff today. Which brings me to Notary, which is an open source project from Docker that implements the Tuff specification. It's open source on GitHub. You can go there today. It's written in Go. You get a command line interface, a couple of microservices for the server side operations of signing and holding data, and you have a robust library to integrate with. Many of you might, many of you might already know about Notary, as Notary has been at the forefront of container image provenance, so understanding where an image comes from. Is it trusted? But for those of you who aren't too familiar with image provenance, I'd like to draw an analogy to normal PDF, JPEG images, especially in the Photoshop world we live in. So, for example, <laughs> this is not a real image, right? Like, you, you could, in some parts of the world, penguins do go and go to the beach, but you're not going to see one drinking a tropical drink, sunbathing, and wearing some flowers in a hammock. You're more likely to see something like this, and you'd expect something like this to be a real image. So in the same way that you'd want to expect real images for photos, you want to expect that your containers are untampered with and trusted. You want image provenance. You want to know that the same developer or person who wrote the code for this image and packaged the image and pushed it, is the, it that same image is the one that you're downloading and deploying your infrastructure. And so Notary, by implementing the tough spec, gives you all of those great guarantees of freshness, authenticity, integrity, key compromise that's survivable, and allows you to apply it to your Docker containers and other containers. And with Notary, you actually can go one step further and have a cryptographic chain of custody. What I mean by this is that you can mandate cryptographically by requiring signatures at each stage of your CI-CD pipeline. Did my image pass CI? Did my image get a security scan? Did my image successfully deploy to development and pass tests there? And before deploying to the production, you can check and verify each of these signatures and mandate that they exist before your container is deployed in your production environment. So Notary and Tuff are very powerful. Notary has been adopted by, as well, many platforms, including Docker, CoreOS, uh, VMware, Linux Kit, and many others. So I'd ask you to please join us. Uh, both projects are open source. On the Tuff side, the spec is a living spec, so there are augmentation proposals where you can propose new additions to the spec and edits. 
called Taps. And in Notary, we're approaching 1.0 and thinking about signing service specs, pod specs, and many other features. So we'd invite you to come join us. And with that, I'd like to invite Chris back up on stage. Uh, th thank you, Riaz. Uh, so yeah, now we're 14 projects, and uh, we've added uh, both uh, Notary and Tuff to uh, the landscape. So uh, thank you, Riaz, for your time. And uh, you know, just a final kind of uh, notice and shout out for the audience is uh, we're hosting KubeCon, Cloud Native Con in Austin in a little less than a couple months now. So if you're interested in uh, meeting the Cloud Native community and, and you know, working with our projects, please uh, make your way to Austin and um, uh, attend the conference. And we'll be back in Europe in, in May in Copenhagen. But uh, thank you for your time. And uh, I'm going to hand it back to, to Jim to steer us forward.